We're talking about Bitcoin Beach today. Where in the world is this place and what really goes on there? Well, I can tell you that we're talking about a tropical place that's on the Pacific Ocean that has a Bitcoin based economy and they're building new residences there. And importantly, it's what's being built around the residences and that sense of community that's important. I'm talking about more than just a pool and a restaurant and a bar, but also a community center and a gym with treadmills that power Bitcoin mining equipment. Yeah. And an artisan market and gardens and an orchard and playgrounds to make it a livable place. So First of all, we're going to talk about why Bitcoin is compelling my guest and I, and then we're going to pivot into it and talk about the real estate and the geography. And come on, I am a geography guy, so this is going to include some maps and some site plans. Yep, we're going to talk about how you can get in and participate and own real estate early if you decide that that's something that you want to do. Hi, I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education. Hey, go ahead and leave a YouTube like on this if you like that we're talking about content that's quite different here, marrying cryptocurrency with real estate. I'd like to welcome back the VP of Sales and Marketing for ECI Development. She's been with them for 10 years, and the company has a 20 plus year track record of reliably delivering development in Latin America. I'd like to welcome back, really, who has become one of the more recurrent guests in GRE history. It's Rachel Jensen. Thank you, Keith. It's a pleasure to be back. And I think one of the most exciting things, especially for the folks who've been listening for a while, is we have a bunch of new topics to talk about. So you can always go back and listen to old ones where we talk about teak and more tiny homes. But today we have a brand new topic for everyone. So I'm excited to be sharing it with everyone and, and getting you familiar with it. What is new and so different to talk about the intersection of real estate, something people inherently understand, and Bitcoin, something that takes some time for people to wrap their heads around with it being a relatively new concept. Bitcoin's been around 13 or 14 years. So Rachel, from your perspective, why don't you talk to us about the both advantages and the disadvantages of cryptocurrency, specifically with the largest crypto by market cap, and that is Bitcoin. Yes, absolutely. So Keith, as you mentioned, from a development perspective, our organization has been around for over 20 years in Latin America, primarily Belize, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. We're introducing a new country today, which I'm really excited about. But cryptocurrency is something that our organization started accepting about four or five years ago. What we realized is there were a lot of folks who really started to understand and believe in this concept of, of cryptocurrency. And as an organization, I think we're very forward thinking, we're very progressive, we're understanding who our clients are, what they want to do. And a lot of people in this space were wanting to use their cryptocurrency. They might have bought in at the time that it was just starting now it did really well, made a bunch of money from it, and now they wanted to do something with it. And there really aren't many opportunities, or at the time, there really weren't many opportunities where people were able to actually use the crypto, right? In a lot of cases, they made a ton of money, but what were they able to do with it? Yes, maybe they were able to cash out to an extent, but were they actually able to take that Bitcoin profit that they made and take the Bitcoin and use it, spend the Bitcoin, right? Not cash it out and then convert it and use it, but actually use the Bitcoin to, to purchase something. And so we entered that space about four or five, maybe even a little bit longer than that years ago. I've done hundreds of transactions since, but what we're seeing with cryptocurrency, a lot of folks are really believing in the concept of it. You know, I was explaining to Keith, to you, Keith, before we jumped on here, I've been to so many crypto cryptocurrency conferences. I've spoken at them before, and I can't tell you the backend technology of it. I can't explain to you what exactly blockchain is, but I believe in the concept of it. I understand the concept of it. This is peer-to-peer -peer money transaction or peer-to-peer -peer transaction where you know, it doesn't matter what country you're in. I could be here in Belize, you're there in, in Alaska, and we could be sending this currency back and forth to each other. We're here in Belize, we use Belize dollars. In the States, obviously, you use US dollars, but you and I don't need to worry about going to a bank teller and getting that Belize dollar um, converted to the U.S. dollar. So it just right. makes it so much easier for those transactions to happen. And as the world is becoming so global, you know, we're at that point where it's affordable for people to be traveling or it's a lot more affordable today than it was 50 years ago to hop on a plane and go to another country. We're seeing there's this real intersection of people thinking globally and thinking internationally and doing things internationally. And so having a concept like, think, like this, I think is is really just incredibly exciting. And from the real estate side of it, we have just seen it to be so 
easy for people who are looking to own real estate because the moment they decide that they want to own, like, all right, here's the process. You, you, and we have a third party facilitator who makes it extremely easy for everybody, but they have the transaction done in just a matter of minutes. There's no questions from the bank asking them, you know, to explain their whole life story and then more in order to get that transaction happening. It's quick, it's instant. And so from that side, I think that's one of the big benefits is the instant ability to be able to transfer money for it. Um, you know, of course, I don't know everyone listening, how well versed you are in cryptocurrency. Obviously one of the disadvantages to consider is the fact that Bitcoin or cryptocurrency generally can be volatile. So for those new investors out there, you do have to understand you can only you know put in what you can afford to lose. But from us on the real estate side of it, we understand that it is volatile as well. Um, and we, we understand that as we are preparing for either building or whatever else it is that we need to use those Bitcoins for and in order to do. But overall, uh, the big advantages are the fact that it is really quite quick. It's simple. Uh, in addition to that, it's universal, right? So when we have clients all over the world, we have clients in Australia, United Kingdom, Europe, United States, Canada, and they don't have to try to convert or find a currency converter who is going to be giving them uh, the, the best rate, the best exchange, because it's all being done in Bitcoin. One of the disadvantages is that it is volatile. So you just have to understand that uh, as well. Bitcoin increasingly makes sense from that perspective of the world continuing to globalize. Yes, blockchain, that decentralized ledger where you can make those transactions peer to peer. You don't need to use that intermediary bank and all of their protocols and so on. And all you need is someone else's digital wallet address in order to send them payment. So yeah, Bitcoin, it's compelling value proposition is the fact that there will only ever be 21 million of them, 19 million of which have already been mined. It'll take more than 100 years to mine those last 2 million. But the thing is, is it's a fixed supply. Gold has a supply that increases one to 2% a year. Dollars certainly increase in circulation at a rate substantially faster than that. That fixed supply is really compelling. You talk about the volatility, and in a sense, it probably makes sense that there is volatility with this price discovery that needs to take place for something that's still so new. And we talk about the word currency. Some might think it performs better as an asset, therefore a crypto asset than a cryptocurrency. However, it is being used as a currency specifically in one nation that has adopted more than six months ago now, Bitcoin as legal tender in the nation. I'll let you tell us where that nation is, Rachel, for those listeners that don't know. We're talking about a New Jersey-sized Central American nation of about 7 million people. New Jersey has 9 million people, just to give you a population density comparison there. We're talking about a tropical nation with 200 miles of Pacific Ocean coastline. We are, and we are talking about El Salvador. Yeah. So on September 7th, 2021, the uh, president of El Salvador, Bukele, announced that Bitcoin was legal tender. So right now, or pre prior to this, they were using the US dollar, but on September 7th, they announced, announced that Bitcoin was becoming legal tender in the country as well, which is extremely exciting. It was the absolute first all over the world since that I know there are other countries that are looking to use Bitcoin or implement Bitcoin into their monetary system, which is really exciting as well. But a few months prior to this, so bring us back to July 20, June, July 2021, we were in Miami at this national Bitcoin convention. There are about 15,000 people there and everyone's just all amped up. And we're talking Bitcoin specifically. We're not talking about other cryptocurrencies at this conference. We're talking about Bitcoin. Everyone's excited. And then the guest speaker at this conference was Bukele. And so we're talking, talking, talking all of a sudden. And of course, we were just so unbelievably busy at our booth that we didn't actually have time to actually go in and listen to the presentations. But we just hear this roar of people from the main stage and everyone's just excited and cheering and chanting. And it turns out that Bukele just announced that they were going to be making it Bitcoin legal tender as of September 7th. And what's interesting is a couple of days prior, we had a fellow coming up to our booth at the conference and was asking us, oh, have you ever considered El Salvador before? I have beautiful 
property there, about 40, 40 acres overlooking this beautiful beach called El Zante. And we're like, you know, El Salvador has never really been in our realm before, although we're based in Latin America, Central America specifically. It's just not one country that I've really ever had anybody ask me about in terms of real estate ownership opportunities. So when this announcement went off, we were thinking that that fellow that talked to us before, let's go find him. And he uh, actually circled back around to us and uh, just ended up being the start of a really fantastic partnership. Um, the fellow's name is, is Mike Peterson, and he's an extremely humble a uh, humble guy. And he was actually, he's actually known as the godfather of Bitcoin beach. So there's an area there in El Salvador that is called um, El Zante, but nicknamed Bitcoin beach. And a few years ago, four or five years ago, an anonymous was donation was made to Mike Peterson with the intent of Mike going to this area within El Salvador and integrating Bitcoin into the local community there. So for a while, you know, even though Bitcoin just became legal tender in the country, September 7th of 2021, Bitcoin was used in this area called Bitcoin Beach for the last four or five years. And so there was this jump start of using Bitcoin in the community. And that really was one of the big pushes towards actually getting Bitcoin implemented in the entire country. And, you know, I was there actually on September 7th. And I have to say we were in El Zante. I really thought it was going to be a little bit more exciting than it was. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a really exciting day. But then I realized the reality of it is that this town has been using Bitcoin for a really long time already. And they already had their own app where they were doing uh, conversions from one person to another. So for them, this was just a normal day. But now whenever they leave the El Zante area or the Bitcoin beach area, they have people that they're able to do these transactions with. And one of the part, one of the, the days that we were there and this, this day and this moment sticks out to me specifically, it was lunchtime and we walked up to the main road, went to one of the local pupusa places. We had some local pupusas and they were selling this. They were, had a little shop there as well. And this girl probably no more than 13, 14 years old. She comes in, buys a bottle of ketchup and there's the QR code that's right there. Um, and it's a little side of the road shop, right? It's no, nothing fancy, some plastic red chairs. And so she takes out her phone. She scans the QR code. She pays for her ketchup in Bitcoin, right? Pays for her ketchup in Bitcoin, shows that the transaction went through to the lady um, on the other side at the cashier. And then she just walks out. And I was like, wow, like this is happening. This is real. This isn't just a fantasy anymore. We're just seeing this really starting to come to life. And so it really started there in that El Zante area no, known or coined as Bitcoin beach but it's just been really awesome to see all the progress that's been happening since yeah this is really happening where everyday people buy something as simple as ketchup by using an app and a qr code on their phone well before we talk more about the bitcoin beach concept racial if we, if we pull back a small amount and you know, why don't we look at the why el salvador question and why el salvador might be a place where having a bitcoin economy makes sense and, and also some of the things that president bukele has done to facilitate that sure so you know generally since bukele came into presidency uh, the country just has been in a very progressive mindset. Crime there has decreased substantially. And uh, because he is you know, a younger president, I think there are these different mindsets than a lot of presidents around the world tend to have. So him bringing Bitcoin into El Salvador, I mean, there was some very negative um, publicity about it as well, right? Um, that this is going to bring more of the black market in, and this was a horrible idea. And you're always going to have negativity, especially when you're at the forefront of something brand new and you're the first at doing something sure. around the world. Um, but since Bukele came in, there's just been a lot of progressive activity that's that's happened since. And, you know, I think one of the real goals while he was doing this was uh, because he wanted to also get off the U.S. dollars. This is my personal guess is he wanted to get off the U.S. dollar track, right? Because they're on the U.S. dollar currency. And so now this gives them a different identity, a different currency that they could be using there in the country, which is which is pretty neat to see too. But um, El Salvador is a country that just a lot of people have flown into and flown back out. Avianca Airlines is based there in El Salvador. So it's a huge hub 
for a lot of flights that are going down to Central America or onward to South America. But a lot of times people just never really leave the airport if they do make it there. And I think that because the country's had just this, this negative reputation over the years, a lot of us just have tended to bypass it and not really put much focus on the country generally. Now, Bitcoin now becoming legal tender there, we are seeing a lot of publicity there, but we haven't really been tracking what's been happening over the last few years since Bukele came in presidency. And a lot of that is cleaning up the country. And so he's really making it this attractive place for investors, for people to, to own real estate. Uh, there are some really advantageous real estate laws. They're like, there's no property tax in El Salvador. And Bukele also announced that there's no capital gains tax in El Salvador on Bitcoin. Right. So he's really making it this progressive place to be. And as a result, what we're seeing is a lot of people who've been in this crypto mindset. Maybe you're just starting out or maybe you've been following it for the last you know, decade, decade and a half is it's bringing this group of like-minded people together where they're able to find each other. And I know you and I were talking about, I know there's a group in Miami, you were saying there's other group in, in Texas as well, but it's really bringing this group of people together who who believe in the concept and want to meet other people who believe in the concept too. So it's exciting to see all the progress that the country is seeing. And you know, as there are more people coming, as there's more investment, we just tend to expect that the country will do better generally. We're talking about something that does not come together very often. That is real estate and Bitcoin. More when we come back with Rachel after the break. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Americans are not saving for retirement. It's going to get worse as people live longer, so you need to think differently, but you can't lose your time. Real estate is the investment vehicle that has created more million and billionaires than anything else. Get Rich Education is one of America's top investing shows disrupting Wall Street. Your host, Keith Weinhold, is a true financial educator and has been an income property investor since 2002. Get Rich Education has created millions in passive monthly income for its followers. Now, Keith is a free course. Real estate pays five ways. Sign up now at getricheducation.com forward slash course. Invest in what produces income for you now and later. Use the link in the description to take the course for free. Real estate pays five ways. Get Rich Education is on every podcasting platform and has its own native iOS and Android apps. Join Get Rich Education Nation to create financial freedom through real estate investing. Subscribe wherever you listen. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're talking with Rachel Jensen about Bitcoin Beach, both really a place and a concept in the small, tropical, Central American nation of El Salvador. So Rachel, let's talk to us more about that real estate component. So typically, one is going to fly into San Salvador, the capital in the largest city near the center of the nation, and then they're going to drive south to El Zante there on the Pacific coast. So just sort of take us from there and talk about some of the things that there are to do in El Salvador, as well as that site for the actual development, the real estate there next to Bitcoin Beach. Sure, absolutely. So from the moment you land in San Salvador, I would highly recommend renting a car. The road going out to El Zante is fully paved. It's very smooth. I would highly recommend also stopping on the side of the road at some of the pusserias and grabbing some fresh pupusas. Um, if you don't know what they are, it's a fried corn dough and it's kind of like a pancake that's stuffed. And so they can put cheese or beans and, and depends on what you want. Sometimes there's meat, but it just is a really, really delicious and filling snack along the way. Also, you can stop at a Pueblo Comparo, which is a very famous uh, fried chicken fast food restaurant. I know that they're, you know, everyone's like, oh, fried food, but I swear, I promise you, it's some of the best fried chicken, if you like chicken, that you will ever taste. And then it takes about an hour to get out to the El Zante area. And El Zante is in a, a stretch of beach that is really well known for surfing. So if you like surfing, or perhaps you have no idea how to surf, but you want to learn how to, this is really the area that people go to, El Tunco, La Libertad, uh, El Zante, and this one specifically, is a huge area for the surfers to come together. So for a long time, I mean, and it, it truly is, not even for a long time now, even today, it truly is a surfing and fishing village uh, and has pretty much been populated or visited by surfers who are coming, people who are looking for more of an adventure. Uh, and then while you're there, yes, surfing, swimming, fishing, all of that. If you're just curious to go travel around El Salvador, I recommend that too. There's a lake there. It's a crater lake called Lake Cotapeque. Lake Cotopeque, which is just absolutely stunning. Spend a night or there, night or two there. Great hiking trails. Um, El Salvador does have a really great outdoor scene too for those who are adventurous and like to 
to get out a little bit more. And in El Zante, if you're someone who's like, you know, I need to travel to a new location and go to an all-inclusive hotel, let me tell you, this is not the right place for that. This is the place where you're encouraged to get out, go check out the, the local restaurants and shops, go hop in the car, go spend a couple of nights at Cotopeque, come back, take a surf lesson. So it really is for more of that adventure traveler or somebody who wants to get integrated into the, into the local community there. So I just do want to mention that part, but the El Zante town, it's, it's really quite cute. It's, it's still, um, I would say on its way up because this is a very new concept for a lot of people, even though El Zante, this Bitcoin beach area has been established over the last four or five years, we've seen more expats start to move down. It really is brand new in the sense of, of concept for a lot of people. And so the property that's there uh, that we're, we're working with Mike on, it's, it's stunning. It's 40 acres and it's on a hill. And from every single part of the property, you have a view looking out to the Pacific waters. Now, if you've never been down to El Salvador before, picture the Pacific coast. When I was there, I was just thinking, oh my gosh, this coastline from some of the restaurants we're at and locations we're at. I was like, this coastline is just so similar to California's coastline. It has the bluffs, it has the hills, it has the beautiful beaches. And understandably so, because it's the Pacific, right? It's just a continuation of the Pacific. But the nice advantage is that it's actually warm water for you to uh, to go in and enjoy. But there's a lot to do. There are a lot of restaurants, a lot of new restaurants now that are starting to pop up because of the popularity. But the property there is, is just stunning. I remember getting to the top of it and uh, just looking out. And I mean, it's just so incredibly breathtaking. And if anybody wants any pictures, I'm so happy to send it to you, but you just look straight ahead. It's green, lush when we were there and you're just looking right out and you're seeing the the Pacific waters and the beaches. And if you have good eyesight, you may see some surfers out there too, but it's just stunning. And I think the best part about all of it is it is within walking distance into the town of El Zante. And I know for a lot of people, especially because we've been in real estate for a while, one of the top questions is, you know, how far is it to a restaurant? Do I need a car? Do I need transportation? And so here, you know, once you get to it, once you get to the area, it's about a 10 minute walk to get to the El Zante area. If you're in a car, it's about three, four minutes to get from El Zante town to the, to the property. So it's really quite close, but because it is 40 acres within itself, you know, we have the green around us. It doesn't necessarily feel like you're right there in, in town, even though you really are just very close. So it's stunning. And, uh, you know, something else we've realized after being in business is, Although people, this is a like-minded community, not everybody wants to live in the same sort of accommodations, right? Some people prefer larger homes. Some people f- prefer tiny homes. Some people prefer luxury condos. Uh, there's another concept that we'll be integrating into this community called earth embed homes. So it's like tiered homes on the hill. And then the roof of what the home below is actually the garden space or the yard space for the house above it. And so it's just this really unique concept and integrating in this concept of sustainability, right? Sustainability, community gardens, community orchards, the gym, for example, will be powering. This is our, this is the goal here. The gym, as you're spinning there on the bike or running on the treadmill, powering energy to be mining Bitcoins too. And, you know, even like if you're not a Bitcoin person and you're like, I have no idea what these people are talking about. That's okay. You don't need to be into Bitcoin. You just appreciate beautiful views, a great culture, really nice nice people, but it's, it's just stunning. It's, I mean, just the entire property is stunning and it's just a really warm, welcoming country. Yeah. Now I watched a video that you were in on September 7th, 2021, which is the day that Bitcoin became legal tender there. And it showed scenes of merchants showing the Bitcoin logos there at Bitcoin beach. And it showed um, someone with your company actually making a Bitcoin transaction in order to buy some coffee and how quick Mm -hmm. and relatively seamless that was there at Bitcoin beach. And it showed you on that great green Hill, that 40 acres of property that overlooks Bitcoin Beach, which is where this development called Gran Zante is going to go. And, you know, one thing that you've done there with serving uh, communities for so long is building that sense of community when you develop a new property in Central America. They aren't just a bunch of, of houses with nothing to do. You talk about the proximity to the community of El Zante, but also 
you know, at least through your site map renderings, and you are still in the, the planning and zoning phase, but, um, you know, of course there's a pool and a restaurant and a bar. And you mentioned some of the other things that are there on the site map, a Bitcoin museum, a gym that powers the mining equipment and an artisan market and gardens and orchards and a playground. So you really build this sense of community so that there are things to do, which really is supportive to property values over the long term. People want to buy places and own places and live in places with proximity to good amenities. So you're sure that they're built right there at the same time that the community residences are. You know, it, it's true. And I've been to towns like El Zante before and more so from the vacation perspective. When I was there from the development mindset, you know, what I realized is there were a bunch of single family homes. They had their, their walls and they were private and they had their access to the beach and whatnot, but there really wasn't that area or the community that had you know, community homes or a place that really has other people there integrated. Yes, you can go into the, the town center and sit at the restaurant and by the river and you go fishing and whatnot. But if you're looking for a place that is amongst other like-minded people, you, you know, you want to, you want it to be safe. You want it. I think one of the big things I know for me too, is when I travel, I want to make sure my home is being looked after and not necessarily having a caretaker there, but knowing that my neighbors are going to be oh, watching over the home. And it's just nice to have that within a, a community like this. And so I think it's going to be welcoming a lot of people. Yes, Bitcoin minded folks, but also people who just generally want to get in on some place that's that's new, that's just starting to emerge, has a lot of opportunity for appreciation and being in a community like that, that really has the mindset of a community, I think does continue to do well in the long term. And you talk about the different residence types. When I was taking a good look at your site map, yeah, I see detached designer homes and tiny homes and both a luxury class and a deluxe class of condos all on this property. A lot of choices in how one lives. It certainly there are. And so tiny homes from 300 square feet to, to, to larger estate lots where you can build a home that's 10,000 square feet. Right. So there's really that sort of variety there. And for some folks, they're looking maybe for a vacation home, some for an investment property. Some are saying, no, this is going to be my permanent home. This is where I want to live. And so being able to cater towards our audiences is, is something that is, is really quite important. And so we understand that. And I think that's one of the advantages that we have about being in business for so long is, we understand what the folks are looking for. And we did end up doing a survey to uh, the folks who've expressed interest in the property and said, all right, what, what are you most interested in? Is it the condos? Is it the earth and bed homes at uh, tiny homes? And the, the mini homes were the ones that came up the most frequent. So tiny homes up to about 500 square feet, mini homes up to about a thousand square feet, right? They wanted, and they also were thinking eco-friendly features. So solar panels, right? So they don't have electric bills and just ways cisterns. So, and they can reuse the, the gray water recycling and, and just ways to be sustainable. There was a lot of interest in that. So it'll all be integrated into the site map. And then folks let us know what they're interested in. We'll say, all right, here's this neighborhood for you. Here's this neighborhood. Check out this one, just depending on what someone's interest is. Yeah. Now, since these haven't actually been built yet, is it a bit is it a bit too premature to discuss pricing? It is indeed. But what I recommend is folks just reach out to us. We have started a list of, of people who are interested and want to get the information first. So I would certainly recommend reaching out um, to us here in order to get that information. We want to make sure you have all the details. You know, obviously, we're still in the preliminary stages here. We're, we're in the development stage. Um, our CEO, Mike, was just in El Salvador last week meeting with the housing minister. So that was really exciting, getting the thumbs up with, with her and moving things forward forward. So that was neat to see, but this is a brand new country. This is also not, not brand new in the sense of development because there've been development there, but now there's just, just been an elevated interest in this country. So, you know, we want to make sure things are being done properly. We're going through the proper channels for that. And as much, I can tell you, as much as our sales team wants to be like, all right, we have something we can show you right now. We also understand that it needs to be done the right way. So there's still a little bit of time between uh, actually starting construction and the infrastructure and building the homes, but we do anticipate having the the initial site map and we can set out the, the preliminary site map now if anyone's interested, but renderings and, and all those final prices, I know that's the big one, um, getting that out to folks as soon as we finalize it. 
Yeah, that sure would be helpful. You know, Rachel, maybe before we wrap up, since we have a lot of North American listeners, maybe some that haven't bought outside their home nation before, and especially that haven't bought specifically in El Salvador before, are there any potential foreign nation quirks, I would say, when it comes to buying real estate there that someone might not be used to if they live in North America? You know, not really. I think that the big thing to mention is you do get title to your property. That's one that I always do like to mention because you do hear stories about people not getting title to it or it's in a bank trust and they can never actually get title. But this property here, it is fully titled. And in addition to that, there is a new proposed residency program. So like a green card program in El Salvador, where if you invest three Bitcoin, doesn't matter where in the world you're from, but if you invest three Bitcoin into the country, then you'd be able to get your permanent residency status or residency. I think they're working out those details, whether it's temporary or, or permanent, but it's not the Bitcoin equivalent. So you're not saying, all right, well, three Bitcoin today is $50,000 times three is under 50,000. No, no, no. Like, don't even do that conversion. It's just three Bitcoin. And so that could be in the investment in the property investment and property investment. And then from there you qualify for residency. So that's all being finalized too. Um, you know, I think that those who are forward thinking and those who like to jump on opportunities uh, in the beginning, typically those are the ones that are the best rewarded, the well rewarded. And I would highly recommend just reaching out to learn more. We have a bunch of resources from the El Salvador handbook. Uh, in addition, the crypto guidebook for anybody who's perhaps just starting to dabble in cryptocurrency and wanting to learn about NFTs. I know you just did a, a show on NFTs, right? That's right. Yeah. So everyone go back and listen to that show about NFTs if you want to get familiar there. But we also have a crypto handbook for anybody who's uh, wanting to learn more about the space. So the three Bitcoins could serve as a down payment for a property here, and that would help qualify one? Yep, exactly. And obviously, just depending on the the price of the homes, I think tiny homes for about three Bitcoin, obviously, depends when you're listening to this. Someone's listening to this and Bitcoin's 200,000, then I don't think it'll be a $600,000 tiny home. But (laughs) um, yeah, three three Bitcoin within the property would qualify you for residency. Yeah. 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 This is so interesting. If this sounds interesting to you, you can get started at GRE Marketplace. Just click on Bitcoin Beach or just go directly to GREMarketplace.com slash Bitcoin Beach in order to learn more and get some of these resources that Rachel mentioned, like the El Salvador Handbook. So you just get more context on this small Central American nation and the Gran Zante sitemap. Again, Gran Zante is the name of this 40 acre development in El Zante, El Salvador, which is Bitcoin Beach. And property, they might not have photos yet since they're not built, but renderings and the reservation form as well. If you do want to take it that far and stake your claim at Bitcoin Beach. Rachel, are there any last things that someone should know about Bitcoin Beach real estate? You know, I would say reach out to us. We're happy to fill you in. We have those great resources. We have beautiful pictures of the area. I know visuals are one of the most important in all of this. And and I think many of you are listening to this on a po- in podcast form, so may not necessarily be able to picture it too well, but let's get you the, those uh, photos and videos and renderings like Keith mentioned so that you can just truly see how incredibly beautiful it is. And with that, reach out. Our team loves uh, chatting about opportunities and chatting about Bitcoin and real estate and how we can converge the two together. Rachel, this has been so interesting to discuss. Thanks so much for coming back onto the show. Thank you, Keith. This was great. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.